Look who I found driving home for Christmas. Hi everybody, welcome to another Feel Good Friday vlog. I hope you're all really well. It's the Friday before Christmas and uh, I am a smuggy Mac smug face because I've got everything done. <laughs> Oh, don't hate me. Please don't hate me. But honestly, I don't understand. It feels like Christmas should be tomorrow, but it's, it's, it's days away. I don't get it. And look who I found yesterday on my flea market trip. Easter Bunny. I just couldn't resist it. I know it was a ridiculous move. <laughs> Uh, but he's amazing. I can't get over how cute he is. He's literally driving home for Christmas. And he was a pound. But if you look at his face. <laughs> God, stop looking and laughing. He looks like he's kind of um, in one of those crazy car capers, you know, like in the 1950s when British Elan comedies were making those. Uh, Terry Thomas type, oh, hello. Oh, no, that was Leslie. Leslie, someone. Oh, all those fabulous 1950s comedy capers. But he's got that kind of face because that's his bow, but it's making his chops look like they're kind of... <laughs> honk, honk, out of my way. <laughs> look at his paws. Honestly, I've got to stop. I am obsessed with it. Right, okay, what I've got for you today is everything. I've got everything. The flea market was full of fire. I've been to charity shops I haven't been to in months. Absolutely wrecked in the treasures. And um, just a load of gorgeous bits. So I'm going to show you. No particular order. I've got it all piled up here next to me, as usual. I've got clothes, jewellery, knickknacks, treasures, shoes, Easter bunnies, and best of all, I've got my sprouts. Every Christmas, the supermarkets are worse than ever. I don't, honestly, I don't know if it's the same all around the world, but they're only shut for one day. Poor shop, shop workers. Um, but last year, sprouts are my favourite, well, one of my favourite vegetables. Peas and sprouts are my favourite vegetables. And uh, last year, I had to ask for help to get a bag of sprouts that was kind of dropped, that had dropped down the back of the crates in the supermarket. And it was the only bag of sprouts left in the whole of the country. I don't understand everyone goes absolutely crazy and the trauma of that stayed with me all year so I thought I'm not I'm not risking sprouts being out of reach again so I went yesterday and there's hardly anyone in the supermarkets and I just bought four bags of sprouts so I am happy I am sorted because I heart Brussels sprouts right then Smuggery and gloating out of the way. I hope you're all sorted and you're all cosy and comfortable and content. If not, I hope this Feel Good Friday vlog brings you a little respite, a little bit of peace from whatever Christmas chaos you're in the middle of. <laughs> so I'm just going to start. There's no order. This was these three things were from a charity shop from the far side, uh, the place where I haven't been to in months. Sorry, if there's a jump cut there, it's because I've just cut out a load of needless yakking. <laughs> Here's the stuff. Oh, hello. Mother and baby elephant. These were £1.50. They were in a glass cabinet and they're by Mikasa. It's porcelain. And uh, I bought these because I couldn't leave them on their own. Look, they've got a lovely little tassel on top of the hanging thing. Obviously, they're for a Christmas tree. I couldn't leave them because they'd been in the cabinet with kitten and mother. Oh, it's me and Begonia. Oh, they were 150 as well. Also by Mikasa, white porcelain with little gold painted details. They're not completely my style, but as you probably are aware already, everything is my style. 
I love everything I see. And uh, I loved her, gorgeous. And also this little scamp, same price, one pound fifty, one fifty each. And Makassa, a little cat with a Santa hat on, with its fresh kill Christmas tree. So obviously there was no way I was going to leave them. They're gorgeous. Strangely, ceramics and glass were very much the whole from this area, from from those towns over the way. Um, and I, I don't know how that happens, but it, sometimes it just does. It's just one of those weird flukes. And um, from another charity shop, I found this amazing mug. It is the Blackpool Tower Ballroom. And uh, everyone in England knows exactly what Blackpool is like. It's called the Las Vegas of the North. Uh, I've been a couple of times. I've actually worked in the Blackpool Tower on a television show for the BBC. And... Uh, it's something I don't really like to revisit in, in the dark moments in bed. <laughs> because I was in charge of the um, human circus performers who lived in the bowels of the tower. The tower was built in the Victorian era and it was built with a cellar that kind of held the elephants captive. Obviously, long ago, all that's over horrendous history however humans live down there now <laughs> and I have to confess that's where they belonged because they were terrible people <laughs> and I was terrified of them and uh, yeah I had to I had to sort their music out and it was just an absolute horror from start to finish and you had to walk down in the Blackpool Tower these kind of Victorian stone spiral stairs. The Blackpool Tower looks like the Eiffel Tower, but smaller, but it's still big. And um, my God, honestly, it was like the descent into the abyss of Satan's lair. <laughs> and I was, I was only young. I was only in my early 20s. And uh, it got so bad in the end, I just said, the, said to the musical director, I'm not doing it. <laughs> you can shop it if you want the music that bad you go down there and he tried to get all sort of uppity and angry and screamy shouty manny which the, the, the a lot of men scream in television um well well it's not the story we're doing today and uh, i said well look you can forget about your screaming and your shouting and your sheet music if you want it you go down there if you think i'm so incompetent and uh, he sort of cowered and his tail went between his legs and he said, all right, okay. <laughs> so I don't know what they did, but they had music and uh, everyone survived. <laughs> and that was a few lifetimes ago. But anyway, the ballroom is the sort of epicenter of ballroom dancing. It is proper, legit, not ironic, strictly ballroom. And it has the greatest ballroom dance floor in the world. It's um, sprung. So it bounces and I've had a little dance on it and it, it's truly incredible. It's beautiful. It's glamorous. It's where all the championships are held. And uh, I found that mug and that was 50p. <laughs> so I whipped that off the shelf and I bought that. Uh, in the same shop, I found this great big beast and... Um, I was sort of in two minds whether to buy it and then I stood back and I looked upon it from a distance and I thought it was too unusual to leave. Definitely vintage, I thought possibly 70s but I've just done a little bit of research and it's actually from the 60s and it's sort of that strange no man's land between brutalist and traditional Tradalist. <laughs> Just made that up. I don't know. Talk a lot of nonsense. So it's that 1960s green. I've got some amazing proper brutalist green glass. And um, it's quite a chunk. It's quite a lump. It was £4.50 from the YMCA. And there you go. It says Verapam Paris made it in, in Italy. And that's a sort of rose relief. 
So, I mean, I just got it and I'll fiddle about with it, give it a good clean. It's quite um, fogged up from old water. But uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting. So I got that. And um, from another shop, I saw something through the window that made my knees buckle. I was a bit like that. This to me is just screaming the 1990s. I just, I don't know if it is the 1990s, but oh, I absolutely love it. And it was five pounds, which is a lot for a charity shop. And um, I didn't know who made it. I didn't know anything about it. It's not signed. If it had been signed, it would have been signed by Franco Moretti. There you go, Franco Moretti. And it would be worth around about 300 and something pounds. There you go, look. But it's not. And I saw here that there's the residue of, a, of an old sticker. So I had another little Google. Let's put that. There's the stopper. No chips or anything like that. So it's that sort of matte, frosted glass. When this is in the light, when this is in the daylight, I need to light this properly for you for you to get the full benefit. It's phenomenal. It's so gorgeous. Let me just find out the um the maker. It's still valuable. I'm just getting my doodars up. There we are. Look, look at that sticker. So that's Antici and Jelly Murano perfume bottles. Um, I think it's probably worth about 125 or something like that. But it's obviously not for sale. It's going into my collection because I am obsessed with it. Completely obsessed with it. I definitely need an illuminated glass cabinet because all the gorgeous stuff that I'm collecting, like the really good stuff, I'm wrapping it up and putting it in boxes, so it needs to be out, out. Uh, that's good. And for some reason, I don't know how it happens. I didn't get this from this charity shop, but I got it on Monday from another charity shop. I found two more of my lovely favourite style little spice bottles. These were three ninety nine for the two, so four pound for the two, two pounds each. And I've got a collection of these in amber with the flat tops and some larger blue ones but i love this kind of bubble topped style this is one i've had from a charity shop i've probably had it for about two years but don't they look good see what's happening beauty beauty is happening Gloriousness, oh, soul enriching colour. Oh, mm. gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I think that might be the end of the knickknacks year. Um, jewelry, here we go. I love you. I thought it was a dragonfly, but it turns out it's a damselfly. Something to do with the width of the eyes, how wide apart the eyes are. And it's possibly a lot older than I thought it was. It might be um, 1930s. There's one listed on another um, site like Etsy or eBay or something like that. Or maybe a private site that says it's a 1930s silver. It is not stamped, but I was convinced it would be. So when I turned it over in the shop and saw that there was no stamp, I still was convinced it was silver because it looks it, it feels it, it just has silver about it. And they've tested theirs apparently and they said it's 925, sterling silver anyway. And uh, look at his little front legs. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's definitely not a modern mass produced one. Look at the back leg. <laughs> Reminds me of someone. She's absolutely fine by the way. It's that time of day where she's absolutely out for the count there's no budging her so i'll try and squeeze in some footage of begonia coconut at the end um sorry it's because of the daylight 
it's lovely and warm. It's really mild. I went out to the um, to the shop this morning in just my Christmas jumper. This is my jumper. Uh, yeah, so I've got that. And I also got these bag of vintage buttons. And they've actually got dragons on. So they're sort of a plus, you know, that plastic metal that's not even Alexa, it's not even aluminium. It might have about 10% metal in it. They're dragons, so I'll find something fabulous to put those on. Um, oh Lord, I've got a tangle. Wait a second. Yesterday from the flea market, it was 50 pence. It's an old coral, I would say 1950s. I know it's coral because I've been doing my endless research on the tags and uh, this one is the, oh, what do they, oh God, here we go, I've forgotten again. Seriously, I have to look it up every single time. Pear, it's the pear. So that's that and that's got the full pearls on it. It's in a uh, very good condition. Well, good to very good condition. Uh, I also got this one, which is also coral. And I think that one's called the pine cone. That was 150. This is beautiful. This is in outstanding condition. It's like new old stock. That was from a charity shop, not the flea market. If I'm wrong on any of these tags, by the way, please leave a comment and let me know. God. Gorgeous, a sort of lariat style, but it doesn't slide up and down. Um, okay, I got this as a bundle on Vinted. I bought three from a lovely seller. This one is a replica of the Fabergé egg holder and it's gold tone, it's metal, it's quite heavy, it's good quality replica. It's not the Joan Rivers one, it's just a, you know, like a generic one, but I love it. I thought I could put some sort of spells inside. You can buy them new and you get a sort of a crystal stone egg to put inside. You can choose this type of crystal you want, but it's got a lovely little catch like that. And then inside, you can put your curses or your spells or your um, a little rolled up fiver if you need to make sure you can get the bus home. <laughs> or a little rolled up nifty 50 quid if you need a taxi. <laughs> or a wish if you think you might need a train. Just make a wish and hope for the best. <laughs> Probably get a hotel. Uh, and it's on a really nice fine chain. There's something quite tasty about this chain. It's very thin and light, but you know what I mean? There's just something old school about it. So that's good. That's like a Fabergé neg. Lovely colour. I love that gold colour. I also got from her in my job lot this fantastic vintage gold disc bib so these are metal they're not the plasticky ones well they are the sort of plasticky metal you know but it's vintage little bib disco great i thought that might be nice for everyday wear <laughs> you know when i want to keep my fancy mesh bibs for best <laughs> i thought i might wear this to the flea market on the wednesday morning in the rain <laughs> Shall I put it on here? Yeah. Cute. And also from her, I bought three all together. I bought this because I just thought it was really unusual and weird. It is a Napoleon Bonaparte medallion. And it's being converted, obviously, from some sort of coin like a you know like a sort of um memorial type coin it's not old it's not worth a million pounds i just thought it was really unusual and i thought it would be fantastic for some sort of um 
feature in a story, in a short story in the future. I feel I've got something brewing. It's about cats. I've had it brewing for 20 years. And uh, oh, I wish there was some sort of magic pill that would I could take that would make me just sit down for five minutes and write it. <laughs> but there isn't. <laughs> oh. So yeah, look at that. There he is. Old Napoleon. What a bastard. Right, okay. Where should we put you? Oh, well, I know where I'd like to shove you. Right, here we go. We'll put you on there. It's him. Uh, all those three, uh, all together I paid £10 for the three plus shipping. So it was about £13 or £14. Pounds. F bargain entertainment, I thought. Uh, and I... On the jewellery thing, I think this is the last bit of jewellery, is it? What's that? Yeah. Yeah, this is the last bit of jewellery. This absolutely mega chunk. Looks like a designer piece, but it's not. It's probably vintage Topshop or um, something like that. But it looks like Machino or um, like a big Dior style thing. Massive puff hearts very industrial looking pewterish colour but um, it's just look at the size of that <laughs> it weighs an absolute ton definitely a necklace or a weapon whenever you need it to be so yeah let's surround Napoleon with a big heart weapon <laughs> that's the last thing he needs Look at the size of it. Massive. Cool. Okay, so that's all the little bits. Next, I've got um, fashion show for you. Bags, hats, frocks, pants, trousers, scarves, belts. Oh, that's all. I've got it all. Oh, it's so fabulous. Brace yourselves for incoming. Right. Got this in the flea market. It was £3. Kath Gibson uh, cat bag. Kath Kidson's not my huge sort of go-to fashion style, but anything with a cat on, basically, you hear me. And it's in really good condition, and I thought it would be a perfect crossbody flea market bag if I ever feel like a change from my old um, little embossed one. So that's cute. It's got a little bit of discoloration on the edge there, but for £3, and the cat's fine. Oh, I felt. I fell, but don't worry, I survived. I didn't fall far. It was just an inch back onto the sofa. <laughs> just thought I'd add some drama there. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that. It's gorgeous. And from the flea market yesterday, from Good Cop, Bad Cop, who are both now really good cop. They're both really nice. They're both really nice men. Uh, they're the sort of... Um, what do you call it? Like a sort of steampunk... Nuts in May style hippie chic they've got going on. Yeah, it's it's something that you don't see very often these days. It's, I like seeing, you know, like people with their true fashion sense, you know, because everyone sort of looks so the, the same, you know, they all wear exactly the same. There isn't really a style of uniqueness anymore, you know. Everyone's so conservative in their in their fashion. Um but yeah, these guys, these dudes have just got sort of like a flea market sheet going on. <laughs> I like the look. I like the look. And I found in their boxes and in their crates the iconic old lady Ethel hat. Oh my God. Look, it's one of these. It's a Kangol four fur berry with the bubble on the top. You never see a woman in these anymore, do you? They were of an era and they've they've gone, I'm afraid. I think they're all gone. So there you go. There's the Kangol vintage label, made in England design. Immaculate inside. I, I put it through the machine a couple of times. It's super, super clean now. But there it is. Isn't that fantastic? Hello. The Ethel Hat. It's not its real name. I'm just calling it the Ethel Hat. Um, I can't wear it, unfortunately, because I've got a huge head and nothing stays on there very much. 
apart from my hair. <laughs> but I couldn't leave that there. I think that was 50p. So I'm thrilled with that. That might go into a photo shoot. There's Babs. She can wear that for the rest of the day. She looks good. I also got a scarf from the big... I don't know what to call it. I can't. I don't want to call it the rag table, but in my head, I've called it that a few times too many to get rid of it out of my head. It's not a rag table at all. I found incredible like vintage stuff and what have you. It's just like a load of clothes and fabrics and stuff like that. Um, but this one is a gorgeous hummingbird scarf. I love the fabric. It might have some silk in it, but I think it's probably polyviscous. And it's a modern brand. 100 Stars is the brand. I looked them up. They sell beautiful scarves that retail new for about £36. But I'm just looking for a little hummingbird for you. I paid a pound for this. And I think that is exquisite. I love birds. i got to tell you, I can't believe what happened the other day. You know, I said... I wasn't going to tidy up the yard in. I wasn't going to clean up all the leaves and the dead twigs and all the stuff. I was just going to absolutely leave it for the creatures. Well, talk about payoff. I was standing in the jungle room and uh, it was a freezing cold morning. It was still quite dark. I was getting ready to go out and um, a little robin, seriously, a little red robin was bouncing about right in front of me on my um, old dead twigs and leaves in the leopard heads and the planters and jumping about all the other stuff and I just my heart sang and my whole body just sort of just fizzed with pure joy it was divine it was such a glorious moment it was really primal you know it wasn't like oh look at the lovely little bird my whole body reacted in the most primal joyful way and I just stood there and watched it to move the pleasure in just standing there watching this beautiful little round ball hop about was exquisite. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to just leave everything out there. Obviously, it's just like picking off seeds and mites and bugs and things that are all living in there. It's still, even though it looks dead to us, it looks pretty messy to the creatures, it's like a feast. It's like a Christmas Day feast. So that's that. I'm going to stay uh, glued to the French doors. <laughs> Maybe that's what Begonia's doing. She's just watching the rock. No, she's not. She's looking for things to kill. <laughs> so the pair of us will now spend the rest of the winter just staring at the French doors for two very different reasons. So, great. I have also been thinking what I can do with scarves where all the beautiful design gets hidden when you put it on as a scarf because often the most beautiful artistic bit is right in the middle and that's rolled up and tied around your neck and then there's like a plain border and I just think maybe a man has designed this maybe a man has just sort of designed a pretty picture but has never worn a scarf in his life never taken any notice of women wearing scarves <laughs> Why Why would you put the best bit in the bit that isn't seen? So what I think I might do, because this is not vintage and it's not silk, it's not super, super valuable, it's not a design piece, what I might do is cut a big hole in the middle. <laughs> There'll be some of you I know will be having complete seizures right now. But what I mean by a hole in the middle is a hole for my head and put it over my head like a poncho, stitch up the two side seams and wear it as like a floaty top and I'll be able to see for myself all the hummingbirds fluttering about my chest and my back and it will, I'll have to look in the mirror for that. And uh, yeah, and wear it all the time like that in all its glory because I wear to death a thing that I bought in Madrid. It's like a floaty floaty sort of poncho top and everyone comments on it the women love it strangers in the street love it and uh, I love wearing it it's just so comfortable and practical and I feel quite floaty glamorous in it quite bohemian um, so I might do it with this tell me what you think I'll put it on the mannequin and show you what I mean so like that look but obviously better 
if there was an actual hole in the neck. Do you know what I mean? So if I cut a hole right in the middle, big enough for my huge big noggin, throw it over myself, put two little seams down there, leaving obviously holes for my arms, and uh, I think that would look fantastic. Don't you? I just think it's beautiful. Let me try it with a necklace. Is that going to go? Maybe not that necklace. Maybe something in gold or yellow. Oh my God, wait. Do you remember those beads I regretted buying the other week? Well, maybe they might have their moment. Behave yourself. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I love myself so much. <laughs> I'm brilliant. <laughs> right, next. Big belts. Look at the size of that. What an absolute beast. I think it's vintage. I'm not too sure if it's a remake, but it could be be a tease that's just been kept in immaculate condition something about this bit makes me think that it's 80s it's in incredibly good condition really i mean really good i don't know i mean they do make them like this still but there's a plastic stone on there little plastic gemstone that's quite scratched and i don't know i honestly don't know but it's incredible that was three pounds from a charity shop. I've got uh, this next one at the same time. I actually bought three belts at the same time. I don't know, I was just taken by the mood. This amazing white one. Oh, I'm pretty sure this one is vintage. I love the way it has this sort of deep V at the front. It fastens. That's a real buckle, so it really does go through. So that side comes through. And there's like a sort of... Um, double emperor, emperor and empress type motif on that sort of stock on coin. I think it probably is vintage. I just, I would just have more of a feeling that this is vintage than the black one. Uh, it's definitely got a Versace style, but I don't think it was intentional, if you know what I mean. I think it was probably just around about the same time or before when this started to happen. And um, it's in amazing condition as well. It's really good quality. And that was three pounds. And I like the way that it sort of just sits like that. It's really well made. It's beautifully designed. Can you see? Like that. Big old heavy chunk. Lovely. And the last belt. Do you know why I love this one so much? Not just because it's got a huge, big rectangular red buckle it's because it's really really long <laughs> and it goes all the way around my middle and it fastens which is something that hasn't happened with a belt for a long time <laughs> but isn't that fantastic i love that so that's that right okay so those are the belts i also got these vintage shoes, these are 1980s J. Renee, made in Hong Kong, faux snake, fake snake print, uh, high heel court shoes. Well, they're sort of mid high, aren't they? I thought they might fit, and I was really excited about that because they're in incredible condition, um, but they're just a little bit too big. They're an eight and a half medium, which is obviously an American size. So that makes them a UK six and I'm a five, but it's a vintage six. So it, I thought I mm, might get away with it. They might be small enough, but they're not quite. It, I might try with an insole, but to be honest, the days of wearing these kind of heels are over for me. Um, but I do think I might use them as a sort of um, a starting point for a character when I find my magic 
focus pill and sit down and uh, write all my stories that have been crowding in my head for the last 20 years. <laughs> I'll be sat here next Christmas with the same old story. Yeah, maybe I'll write them next year. No, I haven't got any choice. The time has come. So, but it's all the knick knacky bits. I also got some jewellery boxes, it's a nice, lovely nice pink zero one and a William Morris print one that used to have hand cream in it but I use these for storing my um, nice jewellery in. I do like this zero one, it's a pink one, it was 50p but the sticker's right on the cardboard top so I don't know if that'll leave a mark when it gets peeled off. I got some modern Yardley soaps. However, the show is not over. <sighs> I want to say I've saved the best to last, but it's all the best. It's all fantastic. But I... Oh, hold the camera still. I, uh... Yeah, I found some pretty funky fashion. Brace yourself, incoming! Bricks! <laughs> they were from the rag pile. They were new old stock. They're by Linton and they're vintage. I knew as soon as I saw a little bit of jumbo cord in a mossy green that they were golden and I thought oh god please 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 be 1970s pedal pushers because I had one of the greatest outfits that's ever been outfitted ever when I was young my mum made me a sort of a rich claret burgundy red pair of yeah super proper cotton velvet pedal pushers and a matching satin little lord Fauntleroy button up to the neck high collar puff sleeved big cuffed sort of blouse top to go with it oh my god that outfit was insane and i've i mean oh i cut it up into bits when i was you know a teenager I tried to make hot pants out of it <laughs> <laughs> I just wish I had it now and I'd frame it and put it on the wall and ever since then really since I realised I made a mistake about cutting up the pedal pushers they, honestly they had buckle uh, buckles under the knees you know like this bit and I wore them with stilettos when I was a child <laughs> to the school Christmas party <laughs> massive hair <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it, was it? No, it must have been the 80s. It must have been the 80s. I might have even worn the top, the blouse bit, to the to, to Wham, to see Wham in concert. <laughs> um, oh, the dream. So anyway, yeah, I, I, as soon as I saw the cord, I knew. But I thought they might have been ladies' pedal bushes, but it turns out that they're bricks or breeches. And um, they're far more sinister than I had in mind. They're traditionally hunting trousers. Ugh, I'm not having any of that. No, no, no. I'm really, truly, honestly hoping that these fit me, but they might be too small in the waist. Uh, so, yeah, they're men's sort of country wear. They really are vintage. I don't think they've ever been worn. I've washed them a couple of times through the machine because they had that old stock vibe well texture and aroma um and they're still wet so i can't tie them on but i'll let you know and yeah they're amazing i've seen a few listed that are really well worn and they're going for 50 pounds so i don't know I'm, i really hope that they do fit because what i want to do is a sort of nina simone-esque inspired outfit with some pedal pushers some vintage 1970s tan boots and something big and poofy at the top or maybe something very sleek at the top i don't know yet white top no belt big jewelry pedal pushes if not these the search goes on and some 1970s boots i just want some trousers that go out a little bit and then are fitted it under the knee to go with boots because I love that look so yeah I don't know maybe all of that there so that's them they were two pounds
this is truly absolutely wild. I've got no idea what's going on. Definitely old vintage. I think it might have been a repurposed um, bedspread or throw uh, and done in the 60s. It's hard to tell from looking at it now how much of a 60s vibe it's got, but I just think someone has cut this up in the 60s and made it into some sort of wild, hippie, Woodstock-style maxi coat. It's got puff sleeves. It's got covered buttons. So it's not just like some quick, you know, festival-type knock-up job. This is really... They've really, they've really done it. They've really gone for it with a pattern. It's got fitting. It's shaped. <laughs> I have not got a clue what is really going on. Because I thought when I saw it, it might have been an Egyptian-style bedspread that someone's made up for a fancy dress costume. But now I think it's Indian. Uh... I don't know. Look, that sort of made me think. This one with the wings. I just saw it all bundled up in a knot in the flea market. Not on the rag table, just on another table. And it was a pound. But you see, look, this is this is serious effort. Um, it's still very wet. I've put it through the machine twice. It's so old. Look at this. They've covered the buttons. And it's like this inside. I have not got a clue. Not a Scooby-Doo. If you know. It's sort of it's sort of happening with the old bricks though, isn't it? <laughs> I'll turn it around. See, look, they've both got puff sleeves. Do you think it was... Ugh, I can't turn it. It's so heavy, it's soaking wet. Go. Do you think it's like proper, proper hippie seventies number? It's like that on the back. Isn't it great? Isn't it absolutely brilliant? Oh, well done. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. Anyone got any idea? Hang on. Who are they? Is this a story? What's he giving him? It's not a tambourine. You see, look, that looks Egyptian and that looks Indian. I don't know. Is that, is that? Lobster? No. This looks like a fight. This looks like a, a sort of a war. Oh, there's Paisley. So that's Indian, I think. I don't know. There you go. Please leave a comment. <laughs> please, please leave a comment and tell me what you think. <laughs> Isn't it fabulous? Okay, so those are wet. I'm going to take them off the mannequin and hang them up to dry. But um, it's not over. Oh no, it's getting better. <laughs> I don't know if you're getting that colour. But that is like a rich, dark plum purple. And it's a vintage 1990s, which is now all the rage. It's absolutely on fire. That's what everybody wants. All the, all the youngsters want 90s. And um, it's got sequin embellished chest yoke. And it's silk. And it's a size 16. Hallelujah. Which is obviously a vintage 16, so it's more like a 12 to 14. But it is just incredible. The brand is a resource. I've seen others listed uh, similar, I think, for about £60, 60 to 80 Uh Obviously, it's not for sale. It's for me. It's fully lined. It's the softest fabric. And I picked this one up with another one, which is coming... <laughs> Uh, in a charity shop on Tuesday and I put this one back I was sort of humming and hawing they were only 650 each but I was just like thinking, oh god I just 
haven't got haven't the most ridiculous thoughts go through my mind like I haven't got room. <laughs> I think that's some sort of coercive conditioning by the universe, by the world, not the universe. We love the universe. The world conditions us to think we haven't got room. Can I just also just say at this moment, thank you very much to Thelma Thrift, who is the most fantastic, extremely successful, popular YouTuber who does amazing jewellery hauls. I love her style. She's so fabulous. And she gave me an amazing shout out, which I'm so grateful for. But she said it as well. She said, why is hoarding supposed to be so bad? Oh, like, obviously, sometimes it's people are unwell. But often, it's just like, well, leave us alone. We like our stuff. If you can afford it, if you've got room for it, and it's not harming you or other people, what's wrong with it? And it's, it's just like some terrible phase in television oh, this is my thoughts now this is not what Thelma said but she said all of that about hoarding sometimes it's a good thing it's collecting and I completely agree and it was such a relief to hear it so thank you Thelma Thelma Thrift um yeah I just think all of that so you know clear everything out it's just some sort of the latest marketing ploy to flog cheap television programs and books just like it's so cheap to make just go in and wreck someone's life, throw away all their stuff, fling it in the bin, make them feel like they're complete losers and have some sort of disorder. What the hell's a disorder anyway? <laughs> Those television companies are a disorder. That's what they are. They're drunk and disorderly. Um, yeah, so I put it back. <laughs> there was a point to this rant. So I put it back on the shelf and then I started walking around the shop. I was holding the one that I was definitely keeping and I couldn't stop thinking about the texture. It's like in my finger, I could still feel it in my hands and it kind of had gotten into my brain. So I went back, picked it up, obviously took it to the counter and the old man on the table went, oh my God, have you felt this? <laughs> I said, I know. I put it back and I couldn't stop thinking about what it felt like. So I'm having it. He said, oh, oh. <laughs> He was a dirty old man. Don't worry, he wasn't sleazy at all. He was just like, I'm, this feels amazing. <laughs> and it really, really does. I hope you're getting it from the look. But look, that's what it feels like. It feels like the soft, like downy fur on the primordial pouch of a kitten. <laughs> If you don't know what that feels like, immediately go and find yourself a kitten and see if they'll let you touch their primordial pouch. But ask first. <laughs> so there we go. That's the penultimate evening gown. And that's very, very Phoebe from Friends, which is totally on trend now. That 90s Phoebe dress is everything. Here we go with the piece de resistance. <laughs> this, my friends, is a vintage 1990s Emma Somerset silk velour hand beaded cowl neck gown. And I've got another um, a design item by Emma Somerset, and she was the designer on Kensington High Street, the whole Princess Diana scene. Princess Diana wore a lot of Emma Somerset and uh, yeah it was a moment in time in history and sort of style history and this one again must have been from the same woman size 16 vintage 16 the mannequin here is a 10 to 12 there's the back <laughs> there she goes bye bye Look at that back. Look at that plunge cowl back. And the swells. Look at all those spells. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. Oh. Amazing. Absolutely spectacular. Oh, and I love the way the colours also sort of formed its own theme this week. 
it just happened by accident, but it's a lot of very complimentary teals and turquoise and greens and lovely. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. It was a an absolute joy buying it and putting it together hope you have a fabulous christmas hope everything's nice and relaxed and peaceful and everything comes together for you and i'll be here next week i'll see you on the other side of christmas i am now going to attempt to request a primordial pouch touch <laughs> wish me luck so merry christmas everybody happy easter Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Please subscribe and please like and thank you. Bye-bye. Hello. Hello. Are you pouch up? Oops. Are you pouch up? <gasps> Hello. Hi, darling. Hello. I love you. I'm sorry. I know it's your sleep time. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was nearly a half a yawn. <laughs> love you. Merry Christmas. <laughs>